Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless luke 21 25 and there will be signs in the sun in the moon and in the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring No one expected this. A massive rogue wave slams onto the Ventura coastline, Pierpont Beach to be exact, around 11 a.m. Thursday morning. The explosive rushing water quickly washes away cars and people and smashes through windows of beachfront buildings and hotels. Uh. Oh, no. The racing floodwater also chased countless others as fast and as far away from the beach as they could run. Witnesses say some of the victims suffered broken bones. Firefighters and paramedics rushed nine people to the hospital, two of them in critical condition, according to the Ventura City Fire Department. County firefighters are also on patrol. Oh, no! Ventura native Colin Hogue is the man who captured this video. It was it was horrific. Um, there was a lot of screaming, um, a lot of yelling, um, a lot of cussing. Um, I, I, I didn't know how far this was going to go. I thought to myself, this is a tsunami is what it looks like to me. Well, everybody was just watching the wave and because it's a huge wave coming at you. And then right when it started getting closer, that's when everybody started to break to run and then all hell broke loose. Miller ran to his truck, but then turned around to help. And then I grabbed like an elderly lady so she didn't slide all the way down, but it was pretty bad. Local residents watching that video in awe. We've seen the waves pretty strong, but this is the strongest I've seen the it. Waves that the and we've never seen a rogue so wave like that. Whoa! Storms brewing in the Pacific, producing waves oh more than 30 God. feet high. <laughs> slamming the coast from San Diego up to San Francisco. The waves breaching the seawall in Ventura County. The force of the water so strong, this lifeguard had to be rescued. Civilians stepping in and pulling her to safety. Restaurant surveillance capturing the moment their patio was swallowed up. Residents now dealing with the aftermath. Homes and cars covered in debris, this car's hood and roof smashed in. In California, dangerous waves are creating havoc along the Pacific coast to end the year. Powerful storms are turning up ocean water, bringing flooding and damaging structures near the water. Carter Evans reports on the high surf that's likely to continue for days. From Montecito to the Bay Area. Waves as high as 40 feet are pounding the California coastline. In Ventura County, the surf flooded streets with debris, reaching several blocks inland. The fire department there saying eight people were sent to the hospital after this rogue wave smashed into a seawall, swamping a pickup truck. We've got high swells. We've got waves coming in directions we're not used to them coming. Even the most seasoned swimmer and surfer, this is dangerous water. On Thursday, coastal flooding warnings were in effect for much of central California. While evacuation orders were issued in several communities in Santa Cruz and Marin counties. It's a pure state of panic, to be honest, as far as the community goes, because you know there's plenty out there that are not prepared. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near.
Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. A Christian healthcare worker in Michigan is suing her former employer. Longtime physician assistant Valerie Klosterman told CBN News she lost her job for refusing to use preferred gender pronouns and refer patients for gender reassessment treatment. That they asked me very specifically, um, will you use preferred pronouns and will you refer for gender, uh, gender surgery? And I said, I can't do that. Valerie says the company's gender-affirming medical care violates her beliefs and medical expertise that gender is not fluid, regardless of what a patient thinks. It's not, right? We're made in the image of God. Um, it is not something that we can just choose to be. Um, and so I had concerns. Valerie claims one equity supervisor called her evil, blamed her for suicides related to gender confusion, and prohibited her from bringing her Bible and faith to work. Valerie's firing came about a month later. In an email to CBN News, University of Michigan Health West states the organization does not discuss personal issues, then adds it's committed to providing appropriate medical treatment to all patients and respects the religious beliefs of its employees. Being fired is one of the very top stressors that people can experience in life. Valerie's attorney, Kayla Tony, with the First Liberty Institute says the case cleared a key hurdle after a federal judge acknowledged its merit. And for someone like Valerie, whose faith is so central to her life, to be fired for her faith is, you know, just the most traumatic um, event that you could could imagine. As part of the lawsuit, Valerie wants her job back and damages for financial loss. It could, however, take a year before the case is processed. And again, no patient had ever asked her to use preferred pronouns. No patient had ever asked her for a referral for gender transition, drugs, or surgeries. This was all hypothetical. First Liberty believes a victory would seal this case as legal precedent for others who might be afraid to stand up for their faith-filled convictions in the workplace. I think God's being glorified. You know, I think the truth is being spoken in love. And, and you move forward and you trust God. And, you know, that's what we're called to do. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3 1 Corinthians 12, 26. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Brothers and sisters, persecution is here. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians, and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well. 
as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is here. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Brothers and sisters, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6.10-18 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Chicago leaders are exploring efforts to address violent crime in the city, while some statistics have, in fact, improved in recent years. Residents and local officials say more needs to be done to curb the violence there. Correspondent Garrett Tenney is in Chicago tonight. I've spoken with people all across the city. Everybody has the same concern. And that concern, first and foremost, is a violent crime. It was a violent holiday weekend in Chicago with at least 19 people shot and three killed, nearly wrapping up a year in which violent crime across the city is up by double digits, even as shootings and murders continue to drop from the quarter century high they reached during the pandemic. Still, though, compared to pre-pandemic, nearly all categories of violent crime are up by double digits. No place is safe from gun violence in the U.S., even during the Christmas season. In Colorado Springs, one person is dead and three injured. At a mall in Ocala, Florida, a shooter killed one man and injured a woman on Saturday. According to the Gun Violence Archive, a nonprofit group that collects data on shootings, more than 42,000 people in the U.S. have been killed by gun violence in 2023 so far. That number will likely rise through the final week of the year. It has been a very tough Christmas Eve and Christmas for this family now grieving the loss of this 23 year old mother of two who deputies say was shot and killed by her own 14 year old brother. I want you to take a look at who we're talking about here. This is Abrielle Baldwin and her two sons. You can see them in the photo there. Six year old Jamari and Amir, who is just 11 months old. Her sister gave me this photo after we spoke moments ago. She says their family is heartbroken about her loss in this entire 
entire situation as they plan her funeral right before the new year. And Bree was killed Christmas Eve in a shooting here at her grandmother's home in Largo after deputies say a fight broke out between her 14 and 15 year old brothers earlier in the day. Investigators say that fight was reportedly over how many Christmas gifts each brother was getting while the family was shopping. She's just a woman going about life, doing her thing uh, with her two kids, trying to make a living, trying to make it. And, you know, her, her brother <laughs> killed her. <laughs> uh, and why did her brother kill her? Because what she said was, knock it off. Leave it alone. Why are you doing this? It's Christmas. Why are you getting all upset? So he goes over and puts a bullet in her, tears up her insides, and kills her. Leaves her dead in the driveway. Laws are necessary in a sinful world, as we read in 1 Timothy, 1, 9, and 10. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Today, the prosecution said, according to a witness, the three suspects were laughing and enjoying themselves while in the act. Now, I didn't come face to face with the suspects, but the family members that were there were visibly emotional during today's hearings. Today, a judge set a $1 million bond for both the 18 and 19 year old suspects. Court records say on December 6th, the two men and a 17 year old got into an altercation with 53 year old Donald Smith inside Kroger. Security apparently asked them to leave, but they waited for Smith outside. The suspects were allegedly kicking, punching and stomping on Smith until he was unconscious. Smith died this week. Records say a bystander had to come and break it up. First to 10 breaking news in Northwest Suburban Des Plaines. A man is dead after a stabbing inside a Burger King. Police say two men were fighting when one stabbed the other and took off. So far, police have not released any other information about the victim, and they are still looking for his killer tonight. Tonight, 36-year-old Esteban Esono Asu, who goes by Stephen Hutcherson, arraigned on charges of attempted murder as a hate crime. After the stabbing attack of two teenage tourists in Grand Central Terminal Christmas morning. They had no idea he was even there, and he just pulled the knife out of his pocket. He stabbed one girl in the back, um, and then her sister was getting up to run away, and he stabbed her in the thigh. We deal with a lot of crazy people because of the homeless and stuff, but that's to the extreme. We never dealt with that. Tonight, we're learning disturbing new details about the mysterious deaths of a pregnant teenager and her boyfriend. The bodies of 18-year-old Savannah Soto and the father of her child were found in a car yesterday afternoon with gunshot wounds. CBS's Christian Benavides spoke to her mother about the horrifying scene. I don't want to believe that she's gone. It hurts too much. She was my only daughter. 18-year-old Savannah Soto was nine months pregnant. She and her boyfriend, 22-year-old Matthew Guerra, were reported missing on Saturday after they didn't show up for an appointment to induce labor. Because she was shot. And all I was going through my mind was the baby. Is the baby still alive? What was she thinking? You know, was she crying out for me? Soto's family says the couple was found late yesterday inside a locked car in a parking lot about three miles from where they lived. Police said the bodies had been there for three or four days. Soto's brother told CBS News the family was tipped off to the location of the car and he arrived to the scene at the same time as the police. He told us Savannah Soto was in the front seat with a baby carrier and Guerra was in the back seat. He said both were shot behind the right ear. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. One of the many signs that we are living in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Every characteristic listed after men would be lovers of themselves illustrates what men do when they love themselves above God. 
when you jump down to verse 13, the Bible states, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is very evident that evil is getting worse and deception is off the charts. Godlessness is now taking over all aspects of society. Turning now to another war, the war in Ukraine, Russia unleashing one of its biggest aerial attacks of the year. Ukraine says Russia launched over 120 missiles overnight, as well as sending several dozen bomb dropping drones into the capital and other cities there. Officials say at least seven civilians were killed. President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that most of the incoming missiles and drones were shot down, but an unknown number of people are buried under the rubble. Israel is fighting a war on multiple fronts. Behind it all is one enemy pulling the strings. Iran's goal is to destroy the Jewish state. One Iranian leader even called the October 7th attacks an act of revenge. <laughs> Hezbollah pummeled northern Israel on Wednesday in one of the largest single-day strikes since this round of daily attacks began. The attacks caused significant damage, but no casualties. Israeli War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz says time is running out. If the world and the Lebanese government will not act to stop the firing on the northern settlements and keep Hezbollah away from the border, the IDF will do so. About 80,000 Israelis have evacuated from their homes in northern Israel. One Iranian general said that Hamas's October 7th attack and massacre of Israelis was revenge against the U.S. and Israel for the 2020 killing of General Qassam Soleimani. Hamas denied that statement and said the October 7th attack was an act of Palestinian resistance. Visiting Governor Sam Brownback here on a solidarity mission told CBN News it's time that the world points the finger at Iran as the source of Middle East trouble. I think we also have to clearly confront Iran. The source of this problem is Iran. That's who's kind of getting off scot-free right now is Iran. Hamas wouldn't have been armed, they wouldn't have been supplied if it hadn't been for Iran. Hezbollah the same way, the Hutus that are attacking in the waterways. We've got to confront Iran. Meanwhile, fighting continues in Gaza, and the dying mother of one of the hostages, Noah Argamani, appealed to President Biden to press for the release of her daughter. I didn't know that. I don't know how long I have left. I wish for the chance to see my Noah at home. Hamas is still holding more than 120 hostages. The IDF has been trading blows with Lebanese militants, Hezbollah, and there's fears the area where we are could become a second front in this war. Thick gray smoke spells trouble on the border with Lebanon. Signs Israel's patience is wearing thin, warns the country's war cabinet. But Hezbollah isn't blinking. It fires into Israel and says it's ready for more. It's the war in Gaza stoking the flames in the north. Israel faces stiff resistance from Hamas as it expands operations into southern Gaza. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Luke 12, 54 through 56. Then he also said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Jesus was rebuking the multitudes for not recognizing the times they were living in. Jesus, the promised Messiah, was standing right there before them, and they didn't even know it. If the multitudes of Jesus' day missed Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to discern the times we live in and make sure we don't miss the signs of his second coming? Are you discerning the times? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, 
and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.